A very warm welcome to you to our worship for the 14th of February 2021. This is the sixth week of Epiphany, also known as Transfiguration Sunday. So I pray that we'll be blessed wherever we are and even whenever we are as we worship together, either live or on a later recording. I've just got a few intimations to draw to your attention today. And the first is to apologize that last week I intimated that this week would be a thinking day. Uh, that, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, is actually later in the month. In fact, we'll be looking forward to that next week. But today is Transfiguration Sunday, and for some reason I got the two uh, conflated and mixed up a little bit there. So I uh, don't quite know what went on there in transposing those two days. But uh, as I say, today is Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, also to draw to your attention that this coming Wednesday... At 7 p.m., we'll have an Ash Wednesday service, just a nice short service. And that's probably just as confusing as the Transfiguration Thinking Day thing because we're not going to have any ashes. But nonetheless, it does mark the start of Lent. And so we've got some things to think about starting on Wednesday and then as we progress our way through that particular season of the Christian year. And talking of Lent, uh, I would like to host an online Bible study over the period of Lent. If you'd like details of that, please do get in contact. The, the plan is to have that for just about an hour a week uh, in the early evening uh, using the Zoom application. And the sooner you get in contact, the sooner I can get some of the electronic materials out to you because there's a little bit of uh, reading in anticipation of each of those that meets as well. Plenty of opportunity for us to discuss things that uh, might be of interest to us as we travel through that period of Lent. I also want to give you advance notice of our next Drama Kirk evening. It's not going to be held this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday on the 23rd of February, and there we're going to explore the conversion of the Apostle Paul. Finally, I'm sorry to have to report uh, this week the death of two of our long-standing church members, that of May Queen and Jim Balmer. Please do keep the families in your prayers at this time. May's funeral is going to be on Tuesday morning from the church, and Jim's funeral, also from the church, will be on Friday afternoon. If you'd like details of that, please do get in contact with the church office. I'm going to continue to get ready, and as I do so, please do enjoy the music for just a few short minutes, and then we'll start the, the service very shortly. Thank you.
Today is the 14th of February 2021 and it's Transfiguration Sunday. And we gather to worship today with the words of Psalm 60. And our introductory prefaces both to our service, our first hymn and our uh, psalm, are quite, um, quite somber words. We find in verses 10 to 12 these words. Have you really rejected us, O God? Aren't you going to march out with our armies? O oh, grant us help among, against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. With God we shall do valiantly. We're going to start our service today with hymn 189, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Our call to prayer this morning is led by Andrea Davidson and is taken from Psalm 41, verses 7 to 10. All who hate me whisper to each other about me. They imagine the worst about me. They say, he is fatally ill. He will never leave his bed again. Even my best friend, the one I trusted most, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Be merciful to me, Lord, and restore my health, and I will pay my enemies back. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we praise and glorify you for our adoption as your children, for the experience of your love and interest in our lives, our confidence that you will guard and guide us in future we value our cherished conditions as those who have known deprivations and destruction by our own hand when we wallow in sin and cut ourselves off from our companions in the church. We're grateful this day and every day for the wisdom and ability to choose between good and evil and for the opportunity to proclaim the reality of life over death, 
truth over falsehood, love over apathy and malignant wickedness. Our deepest and most proud thanksgiving is saved for the extent of your love for us, apparent in Jesus Christ our Lord. He has wrestled with the anarchy caused by sin. He has consistently and habitually lived a life of obedience. He has even now invited us to know and love Him so that we might be recognized as your children by the power of your Holy Spirit. In these moments, we bring before you, our God, those whose lives are high on our agenda and in need of your active, creative love through men and women like ourselves. Those on the threshold of death, those enduring terminal illness, those who have realized that death is near and all those struck down or badly injured. May they experience the true life that can be found only in you. And in the last days, may their time be lived out with dignity and peace. Watch over all who love and care for them and support them through the community of faith, active in love and care. For all who are bereaved, who have just loved someone they love, or those who ache after many long, lonely days. Those shocked and shattered by the unexpected loss. Those who've lost a child, a life's companion, or a close friend. In your mercy, may those who mourn receive comfort. May they receive support and also understanding so that they might be able to express their grief and begin to find healing and hope. We pray for those who are prepared to be witnesses and give testimony to what you've done in their lives, to those who are your martyrs and who are willing to die for the cause of justice and peace, understanding and reconciliation in this divided and distraught world. For those tempted to refute and recant in the face of physical or mental torture. The ways in which your church is afflicted by persecutions in different parts of the world, even as we stand in solidarity and prayer with them. We pray for the irresponsible and those unresponsive to the love shown by your disciples towards them. Those deaf to the liberating knowledge of their inheritance of faith as your children. Those who risk all to rescue others and those who fight against injustice and inhumanity, who care enough to think out issues and publicly acknowledge their position and their convictions against the tide of popular opinion. There are many who find life unbearable, the deeply distressed and depressed, those in overwhelming and unrelenting pain, those raked with guilt and fear. In every circumstance, grant release to those who suffer and bring them comfort in the knowledge of your acceptance, your recreating, and your restoring forgiveness. Comfort all who cry out silently behind locked doors, who look for a glimpse of hope and encouragement with the awareness of your presence 
with them. May that awareness be ever prevalent for them. Grip once again those who are frail and fragile, the elderly, yes, also those incapacitated with the variety of circumstances they find themselves in. And may they also be able to be given a powerful sense of thanksgiving for all their experiences of life as your children. Sustain them. Sustain us all in the days ahead with the knowledge that they can trust in you and rest easily in faith in your love knowing that nothing in life or death can separate us from your care and love. These things are God, we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, the one who taught us in every time of trial and joy to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, as we've been traveling through this period of epiphany, have you enjoyed the journey? Whether it's been by land or sea, up hills and mountains, or along roadways, as we've discovered, as we've been making our trapes all the way through this period of epiphany, I hope we've enjoyed the scenery as we've worked our way through it, and especially enjoyed our journey with Jesus. As Gregory lights uh, the candles for us today, we're going to think a little bit more about just that. We've been sticking with our candles, not just through Advent, but now also through Epiphany as well, to bring some extra light to the, the challenging journey that all of us have been facing, uh, particularly during this last year, but in various ups and downs that we might personally have been facing during these particular times. Jesus inspired hope in his disciples. They had all sorts of expectations of him. And I wonder if they had the same kind of expectations when he was just a child. It's not easy growing up, especially if there are those around and about us who have certain expectations that will, will do things in a certain way, speak in a certain way, or perhaps refrain from speaking in different ways as well. And no doubt, Jesus traveled with all of that, with the various expectations that had been laid upon his shoulders. He also gave his disciples an incredible sense of peace. Even when they feared what was going on around and about them, and even feared some of the things that he was able to do, he was able to put their minds at rest. And being with him, they found was the best place to be. He also gave them much joy. They loved being with him, whether it was at his side, at a meal, at a table, or on their travels. He was good company with them. In fact, the best companion that they'd ever had and ever would have as he continued to join with them in all the journeys of their lives and indeed in ours. But of all of these things, the best of all was that he had been sent in love, that his father had sent him because he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, a son who would bring light into the world. Today marks a change in the journey that we've been making with Jesus Many journeys have different waypoints as we work our way from place to place to get to our final destination. And even as we've worked our way through the candles and through those different themes, both through Advent and now through Epiphany as well. 
we've traveled through the, with and with those different candles through that journey. And we've maybe been able to discover fresh things. And we're going to discover even more about that today as well. Jesus would be revealed in a special way for who he is, the Christ. And as the Christ, he brought light to the world. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, when we remember that Jesus was changed in front of his disciples. He looked as if he had the brightest of white garments on. His face shone. They were used to seeing him like a man, face to face. But suddenly they saw him shining like the Son of God that he is. Much like perhaps in, in one figure, the way that candle wax is, is dark until it's lit. But once lit, and particularly if you're in a dark room looking at it, suddenly it seems almost too bright to look at until our eyes start to adjust to that reality. How much more so with the Son of God? For those who are going to Sunday Live now, you're going to hear a little bit more about that and about that story. We're going to continue on with some of those thoughts as well uh, here from the church. But as you cross over now to your Zoom session for Sunday Live, I pray that you'll be blessed as we think upon, upon the way that Christ was transfigured and the blessing that he is to us as he met with his disciples up that mountaintop. So God bless and take care. And I hope you enjoy your time with the Sunday Live leaders. But for those who are staying with us, we're also, as I say, going to consider some of this event. This last few weeks, we've been reading all sorts of things around Jesus' teachings from the Sermon on the Mount, some of his miracles, and as he established himself as the Son of God to both the minds and the experience of his disciples. This week, we mark a change where Jesus sets his course to the cross, a particular and peculiar waypoint on that journey of his ministry. The disciples weren't ready for it. And so it was accompanied by this extraordinary event as we consider the transfiguration. Jim Henderson's going to lead us in our gospel reading today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, reading from verse 24 through the end and into the next chapter to the end of uh, chapter 17, verse 8. Jim. This reading is from Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24, to chapter 17, verse 8 from the Good News Bible. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to come with me, you must forget yourself, carry your cross, and follow me. For if you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. Will you gain anything if you win the whole world but lose your life? Of course not. There is nothing you can give to regain your life. For the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his deeds. I assure you that there are some here who will not die until they have seen the Son of Man come as King. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and the brothers James and John and led them up a high mountain where they were alone. As they looked on, a change came over Jesus. His face was shining like the sun and his clothes were dazzling white. Then the three disciples saw Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. So Peter spoke up and said to Jesus, Lord, how good it is that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was talking, a shining cloud came over them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dear son, with whom I am pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard the voice, they were so terrified that they threw themselves face downward on the ground. Jesus came to them and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. So they looked up and saw no one there but Jesus. Amen. May God bless to us these readings of his holy word. 
Amen. Thank you, Jim. We're now going to listen to a previous recording of our choir as they sing the anthem, Love Never Ends. Let us pray. How might we bless you, our Lord, but with the love of our hearts and the praises of our lips. May they be acceptable to you, our God. Amen. I don't know about you, but perhaps one of the things I've found the most difficult during lockdown is the limitations we've had on holidays. It's nice to be able to get away or just have some kind of a break in, in journeys, traveling, or whatever that might actually be. And, and we look forward to times like that, perhaps times with family, times with getting to see a different place, a different uh, view on life, a different culture perhaps, 
These are the kind of things a lot of people get a great uh, deal of satisfaction and benefit out of. The disciples have been on a journey, and it's been no holiday. It's not even been a, much of a picnic on some occasions. They've been traveling dusty roads. They've been camping out under the stars. And then Jesus comes to a point in his ministry when he has this to say to them. And we read it in Matthew chapter 16. If any of you want to come with me, you must forget yourself, carry your cross, and follow me. For if you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. Will you gain anything if you win the whole world but lose your life? Of course not. There is nothing you can give to regain your life. For the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his deeds. Amen. Of course, uh, back during Advent and thinking about the period of Christmas in particular, we heard stories of Jesus being acclaimed by angels in mid-heaven. And this was something that would yet be, something that would be thought of. The messengers that would come and declare Christ to him, to uh, those who were around and about him. Six days later after this statement, they would travel up a mountain and they would see him glorified. And Peter wants to pitch some tents. Now, perhaps you enjoy camping, or maybe you have done in the past, and maybe that was a form of holiday that you previously took. Peter here, his first inclination was to build some tents, some tabernacles. Who would you want to share a tent with? With Moses? With Elijah? Or with Jesus? These are the three tents or tabernacles that Peter suggests that he might make, one for each of them, as he sees this scene before him. Moses went up a mountain himself. He met with God, and we're told that his face shone, and he brought the people the law and a mode of religious practice. And you know, sometimes we need church law or traditions to help us to work well with one another and to mitigate some of the friction that we find that so often occurs between people when they work together. It can be helpful to have clear boundaries as to just what's going on in life. A little bit like this a pulpit here. It's good to have clear boundaries so I don't fall off the edge. But clear boundaries in life certainly are helpful for us. Is that your tent? Elijah also went up a mountain, having been found in a deep depression in all the experiences within his life. And he had a multi-sensory experience of God's presence with him. There was an earthquake. There was wind and fire. There was rocks splitting. But God wasn't in any of these things until... It was a still, small voice punctuating his experiences in life. Fortissimo! Cesare. Pianissimo. A stall, still voice. The prophets reminded people to come back to God, often using actions and, and props and imagery to show people the way to God, to help people to, to understand, even in their gut, how they ought to behave before their God, the relationship that they might have with their God and the way that they would act. Is this your tent? Jesus went up a mountain. In fact, he went up all sorts of mountains during the course of his ministry with his disciples accompanying him. He showed them the way that God walked, 
by his own example. He walked with them in every facet of their lives, consoling them, comforting them, challenging them, and teaching them. And on this particular mountain, he showed himself to be God, the Son of God. And they worshipped. Is that your tent? If that isn't your tent now, surely, Christian, you hope that it will eventually be your eternal tent. One day we'll all make that journey to be with Christ, worshipping Him in His glorified state. But before that, we have to continue this journey of life that's been given to us. Is it our desire to be in Christ's tent day by day by day in all of our own journey? Now, the church in its widest sense has a similar journey to make in our time. There are on the one hand those who would like to see it destroyed completely and silenced just as they silenced Jesus or attempted to silence him during his life. But that part of the journey is for another day. We're not quite in Lent yet. Internationally, but particularly in the West, the church has had quite a difficult time. Specific to our own denomination, we've had challenges even before COVID. But how we get the Christian message across and how we show folks just what Christ is about what Christianity is about. Do we stick to our own laws and rules and traditions and structures as though they'd been handed down by Moses? Do we aim for the highs and the lows of a sensory worship experience as though traveling with Elijah? Or do we travel even in the midst of these kind of things, in the consolation and the challenge that only Jesus can bring. Jesus' disciples had to journey from the well-known of their own background to new territories, trusting in Christ. Christ, their Redeemer, their King, their guide on the journey. And I suspect that we're going to have to make a similar journey, not just as individuals, but as a church. In fact, it might be said that we already are doing so, as such incredible changes have been wrought upon us because of a change of circumstances in this last year and in recent years as well. That kind of change has been thrust upon us. But whatever the future brings, as we take up our cross with Christ, may we always seek His tent and in God's house forevermore our dwelling place shall be. Amen. Let's conclude our service today singing hymn 459, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
into this week looking for the transforming power of God in our own lives and in the life of the church. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide upon you all, both now and evermore. Thank you.